So you're not getting any views and subscribers and it feels like the YouTube algorithm has basically friend zoned your channel. Actually, it feels more like awkward acquaintance nobody likes zoned. And that's presenting a bit of a challenge for you because no matter how great your videos are, if YouTube doesn't serve you, you don't get any views. Sound familiar? Well, if so, I think you're gonna enjoy this video because I'm gonna be teaching you how to take control, how to bypass the YouTube algorithm and promote your videos to viewers on your own terms. That's coming right up. G'day, my name's Marcus. I've worked on multiple successful channels, but I understand that getting views and subscribers is bloody goddamn hard. And I know that because when I first started on YouTube, I sucked, but now I suck a little bit less. So I started GYGC to share some of my experiences, tactics, and strategies. And the hardest part of your YouTube journey is getting started, going from zero to your first 1,000 subscribers. However, this is not impossible. Even as a small creator, if you do implement the right techniques, it is possible to get the ball rolling relatively quickly. You can do that as early as your first YouTube video. And let me give you some context. Let me bore you by telling you about the time I posted my first gaming video. It was actually a very anticlimactic moment. If I could teleport you back to 2015 as a fly on the wall of my bedroom, you would have seen me there hunched over my crappy laptop staring at the YouTube upload interface. Now, being my first YouTube video, a big part of me was pretty nervous. I didn't know how people were going to respond to the video, but I'm sure another part of my mind, <coughs> ego, was filled with delusions of grand. Yes, I'd heard all of the advice. I knew statistically speaking that my video was supposed to flop, but I still felt surprisingly confident that my video would do well. I know, I was a cocky little bastard. So you might be wondering, why am I telling you this? How did that video perform? Well, the video actually did quite well. Yes, believe it or not, my first YouTube video was initially one of my most successful videos. It started gaining substantial traction very quickly, and I remember one day checking the video to see that it had 2,000 views. Damn, I thought to myself, I'm like, this video must be really actually good. good but was it really the answer is no I actually completely fluked that success and the 60 odd very unsuccessful videos that followed that video were direct proof of that as you can see for yourself uh, uh, mm. Yeah, but despite it being an absolutely atrocious video, you can't deny that it was relatively successful in terms of views. Even though the videos you post on your channel are probably 20 times better than my first video, my first video is probably 20 times more successful in times of views than the majority of your videos. The question is why? Because regardless of its quality, my first video was a discoverable video. What is a discoverable video? A discoverable video is one which is engineered to be easily discovered by new viewers. And in most cases, discoverable videos receive the vast majority of their traffic from YouTube search. And this makes them super powerful traffic generators for your channel. Now, and if I can do it with this absolutely terrible video, then I'm sure you can do it. So today I wanted to talk to you about how to start creating your own discoverable videos. Now, there are two levels to this, and I want to start by elaborating on level one. The first thing you want to do to make more discoverable videos is optimize all of your videos to be more search friendly. Now let me provide a little bit of context to why this is important. Basically YouTube's job is to connect viewers to videos that they want to watch. Now that means that the algorithm needs to have an idea of what each video is about so that it can connect it to the correct viewer. For example, if it knows that old mate Bob down the road loves Minecraft videos, it needs to be able to identify Minecraft videos so that it can send them to Bob. But the challenge is that initially the YouTube algorithm can't actually tell what your video is about in a sense that it's AI, it's a robot, it's just lines of code. It can't actually watch your video and be like, oh, it's a Minecraft Funny Moments video. And so what it does instead is it analyzes your metadata. What is metadata? Metadata is basically data that tells stuff about other data. So in other words, on YouTube, your metadata would be like your title, your description, your tags, certain settings, stuff like that. Now these things, these pieces of data all inform YouTube of what your video is actually about. For example, before YouTube sends a video to Bob, it's gonna analyze title, description, tags, settings, of those videos to make sure that they actually are about Minecraft. But a problem I see a lot of YouTubers making is they don't pay enough attention to their metadata. They don't put very much effort into their metadata, their titles, their descriptions, their tags, and actually optimizing their settings. Now, it's not hard to do, but if you don't do it, basically it's gonna make it much less likely that YouTube will find and promote your video 
to the right people. So if you're creating a Minecraft Let's Play video, for example, you want to make sure that you've designated your video as a Minecraft video in the settings of your YouTube video. You've included the keyword phrase Minecraft Let's Play in your title, in your description, and in your tags. And that way it's going to make it easy for YouTube to figure out what your video is actually about and then hopefully connect it to the right people. Now I know that was a very broad overview, but if you want to dive real deep into metadata, how to optimize tags, and how to probably upload your videos, then you can watch the videos I'll link at the end of this video. But there's one caveat to this that you need to pay attention to. When optimizing your metadata, you need to be intelligent about it because there's a lot of competition on YouTube. For instance, in our previous example, we used Minecraft Let's Plays. But the challenge with that is that there are a lot of Minecraft Let's Plays out there on the internet. You have a ton of competition. There's a ton of supply. And what that means is that regardless of how good your metadata is, it will still be substantially difficult for you to actually succeed because there are 100,000 other videos on that exact same topic, most of them by YouTubers who have a bit more data and are a bit more reputable in the YouTube algorithm algorithm's eyes than you. And so when you optimize your metadata, I would recommend that you try to optimize for more niched terms, at least to begin with. What you want to do is identify similar yet less popular terms that you can base your videos around. You don't have to change the content of your videos, but you just rebrand them in a way that connects them to these slightly less popular yet similar terms. Even though there is a lot less traffic coming into those terms, the chances of your videos actually being promoted to that traffic in some way, shape or form is much higher compared to a very general and popular term, which is targeted by many YouTubers. So for example, I hate to compare everything to my experiences, but I promise I'm not an egotistical maniac but I do think these examples help. So for example, when I was first starting out, the series that kind of got me on my feet was a Star Wars Battlefront Funny Moments series. Basically, our viewers would submit clips to us, we would edit them into Funny Moments videos, and then post them for the world to see. And around that time, I met an awesome creator, Crimson Heroes, who was creating very similar videos to me. Now, he was actually a little bit further down the path of YouTube's success than I was, and that was primarily because his videos would get a lot more views than my videos, even even though we posted similar content. And looking back, I think the reason for this is that when I posted my funny moments videos, I branded them and went after keywords such as Star Wars Battlefront funny moments. Now at the time, although there wasn't a huge amount of competition for that term, in fact the competition was actually very low, there were still a couple of large YouTubers posting videos on the topic. I believe people such as The Gaming Lemon, Vanos Gaming, and Game Sprout made a couple of Star Wars Battlefront funny moments. And so in the beginning, even though there wasn't a huge amount of videos, which was great, it was still very difficult for me to compete with those videos, and obviously those videos got way more attention than my videos. However, Crimson Heroes was actually this really intelligent. He actually branded his videos as random moments videos. What he found that there were generally speaking two main search terms people would type into YouTube when looking for a Star Wars Battlefront funny moments video, so to speak. The first was Star Wars Battlefront funny moments, and that was the one that got the majority of attention. But the second term was Star Wars Battlefront random moments. And what was cool for Crimson Heroes is that branding his videos as random moments, meaning when someone did search for random moments videos, his videos were much higher on the search page compared to my videos when someone typed for funny moments. And so therefore, he got a whole heap more search traffic than I did initially. And so that's something that I want you to think about when you create your next video. Instead of going after the huge, massive term that millions of people are looking for, try to identify those smaller terms that basically mean the same thing and rebrand your videos as those. And that way, even though the audience will be less, you'll have a much higher chance of actually being discovered in the first place, which is probably the most important thing. And so that's the first level, optimizing your videos to be more search friendly by strategically adding metadata in your titles, descriptions, tags, settings, so that the YouTube algorithm knows what your video is about and hopefully it can connect you to the right person. There's the second level to this, which is even more powerful yet a little more challenging to navigate. See, sometimes your standard content, the videos that you post day in, day out that you love creating, cannot be optimized well enough to generate a significant amount of attention. Going back to our Minecraft Let's Play video example, we've established that there would be a huge amount of competition for that term. And so even if you did try to put a new angle on it or a bit of a spin on it, it'd still be very difficult for you to find that nice middle ground. A search term that is niche enough that your videos will actually show up as a small creator, yet is not 
it's so obscure that only two people are actually typing it into YouTube every month. And so if you can relate to that kind of situation, you might be in a bit of a challenge because growth feels like a long, slow grind. And that's where this next tactic might be very helpful for you. Even if they're not your standard content, you wanna try and create some discoverable videos that will bring in some traffic. And then if you play your cards right, some of that traffic will hopefully visit some of your other videos and drastically speed up your growth. And one of the best ways to do this is to actually reverse engineer high demand, low supply terms that your target audience might be searching for and create videos around those topics. And to bring us back full circle, that's basically how my first YouTube video actually did okay. What I did completely unintentionally was I created a video based on a specific topic people were searching for. And that topic had enough demand that that video could get thousands of views, yet it had very little supply, meaning that my video actually showed up when people looked for it. And you can do a similar thing. If you're part of your community, analyze what it is that people are interested in or what people are looking for. And if you don't find any other videos on that topic, then try to create videos on that topic. Or if you want to take a more analytical approach, you can use a keyword research tool, which I might make some other videos on that, to discover terms people are typing into YouTube, yet don't have a lot of supply. There's not a lot of videos catering to those terms. And so what we're doing in a nutshell is reverse engineering what it is that people are looking for and creating videos on that, as opposed to trying to create videos and then optimize them later. So I hope all this makes sense to you. I know it's a bit of a complex topic to wrap your head around, but if you can really grasp the principles behind this, I'm sure you'll find a way to implement this tactic on your channel. So thanks for watching this video. If you are interested in learning more about how to optimize your metadata, as mentioned earlier, I've left some videos on screen now. I'd highly recommend you check them out because basically I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step step how I like to optimize my metadata and really go into the nitty gritties as to what physically you need to do. Check them out.